From her comedic timing on Cheers to her chemistry with John Travolta, remembering the life of Kirstie Alley. Welcome to Entertainment Tonight. Michelle Turner will join us in a few minutes from London. You know, it was a shock to hear the news of Kirstie's passing from colon cancer. She was just 71 years young. Kirstie always kept us on our toes, and now we celebrate the life and laughter of another star gone too soon. I feel like I have the most blessed, wonderful, for real, fun life in the world. Sometimes you wanna go. The days that I had here at Cheers with her, they were the best days of my life. I could see myself being 95 doing movies or, or doing shows because I really, I really love doing it. I am one of those people that didn't think I'd make it past 30. I thought I was gonna go down with the rock stars, you know, at 28. So every year to me is a bit of a treat. Kirsty was surrounded by her family and had only recently discovered that she had colon cancer. In a statement, her children thanked the team of doctors and nurses here at the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. We spoke today to Dr. Mark Friedman who practices there. You can be completely asymptomatic and have colon cancer. There's no one thing that says, you have this, you have colon cancer. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. This was our last interview with Kirsty. It was in 2019 at the premiere of The Fanatic, which starred her longtime friend and fellow Scientologist, John Travolta. I'm so excited to see him. He's a chameleon. Usually he's sort of a hero. I don't think he's a hero tonight. John shared this throwback with Kirsty and described their bond as, quote, one of the most special relationships I've ever had, adding, I love you, Kirsty. I know we will see each other again. With Kirsty's sudden passing, John has now lost three important women in his life, all to cancer, all within the last two and a half years. Wife Kelly Preston died from breast cancer in July of 2020. The disease also claimed the life of good friend Olivia Newton-John, who passed away in August. Kirsty, Kirsty. I watch Cheers on the set here, and I call Kirsty and tell her she did great. Actor Parker Stevenson, who was married to Kirsty for 14 years, shared this photo and said, I am so grateful for our years together and for the two incredibly beautiful children and now grandchildren that we have. And from Cheers co-star Ted Danson, I am so sad and so grateful for all the times she made me laugh. Kirstie's last TV appearance was back in April on The Masked Singer. In September, she announced she had joined Cameo offering video messages to fans. If you want something funny or you want something sincere, I would really try to be sincere. Do you love all this magic and glamour of Hollywood premieres? Yes. <laughs> Why? Because it's exciting. From the first time we met a 31-year-old Kirstie in 1982, and in the 40 years since, it was clear she was full of life, fun, and always incredibly candid. My soul was dying. I was killing my essence of myself. In 2012, she spoke to E.T. about her addiction to cocaine. I thought I was going to overdose almost every time. I would do so much at a time. You know, I'd snort the coke, and then I'd sit there, and I'd take my pulse. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. And who would keep doing it? But it's such a weird, mind-trippy addiction. Kirsty credited Scientology with helping her get clean. The plan was to come out, come to California, and be an actress. But I didn't want to be a poor and starving actress. So that's why I went on the game shows. And I was an interior designer, but I didn't um, have any clients here because I didn't know anyone in California. Kirsty made a living doing game shows and bit parts like The Love Boat, but she was 31 years old when she got her big break as a Vulcan in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Stand by. Project parabolic course to avoid entering neutral zone. I was thrilled when I got Star Trek, but I sort of thought my first role would be like Body Heat, you know, or something. I didn't know I'd be playing a Vulcan. Kirstie's first comedic role came in 1987. She played Mark Harmon's love interest in Summer School. You mean the world's sexiest man? Yes. <laughs> Very sexy. <laughs> Mark's a great guy. Does this mean we can have dinner tonight? I didn't say that. We'll just talk about it over breakfast. I always fell in love with guys like Mark, you know, that were totally irresponsible. I was totally irresponsible. And uh, school to me was where you went to meet your next boyfriend. Making your way in the world today. To but it was in the TV classic Cheers where Kirsty really came into her own. How do you do? Uh, <laughs> At 
first I thought, well, do I want to not so much be in Cheers, but do I want to go to work five days a week? <laughs> She joined the ensemble in 1987 after original cast member Shelley Long left the show. As Rebecca Howe, Kirsty provided the perfect love-hate relationship for Ted Dance and Sam Malone. If Me Too had been around when we did Cheers, we would all be in prison. No way, no way. Really? No way. I'm not even kidding. We used to take nudies of each other. We'd, we'd kick open the bathroom doors and take, we were horrible. You can't even imagine the stuff we did. We'd stick each other's tongues down each other's throats. I mean, nobody was saying, no, don't do it. But I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. we would have been in Sing Sing. She's supposed to be with me. <laughs> this is the alley, everybody. I'm going to come down here a minute. <laughs> we were with Kirsty many times on set and for milestone events, including her Emmy win in 1991. What does the winning this one mean? It means, uh, well, it's a, it's a wonderful acknowledgment of of the work that I've done, you know, and it, but more than it means not losing. <laughs> in 1989, during Kirstie's stint on Cheers, she also landed the leading role in what would be the most successful film of her career. Whoa, baby, hot mama, hot mama, you are such a goofball. What charmed you into wanting to play it? Um, I guess John, because he's standing over there. No. <laughs> It was done. Look Who's Talking grossed more than 295 million worldwide. Two sequels followed, so did a decades-long bond between Kirstie and John. There's real sparks between you and Kirstie in that in this movie. Did you feel that? Oh, all the time. Just had natural chemistry, I guess. Yeah, I love her as a person. I really do. Don't I look good? You look slightly cute. I didn't know John before I took the film. It's just real easy for us. But if Kirstie had her way, it would have been a whole lot more. I'd do another movie with him. Oh, oh wait, are you telling us that uh, he's uh, sexy to work with? Yeah, it was, you know, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I'm married. I can't go out of control. <laughs> she did have a crush on me before she got married. So therefore, we were always dealing with um, this uh, discomfort when it came to, like, uh, kissing and stuff. Now that's entertaining. <laughs> In 2013, E.T. was behind the scenes when she reunited with John on her sitcom, Kirsty. How about a hug? Sure. <laughs> That's where she told us her Travolta crush actually started way before Look Who's Talking. Here's the real truth. When I moved to Hollywood, I was going to marry John Travolta. Now, I'm sure I'm the only woman in the world that felt that way. So when I met him at my agent's house, I was trying to act. I was trying to hold it together a little bit, and I want to go, ah! Tina, I would have loved that. Kirsty later told us a Look Who's Talking reboot would be a dream come true. I'm going to try and convince him. As you know, he's his own man. He responds to money and threats. Of course, Kirsty also had a close friendship with John's late wife, Kelly Preston. We witnessed the pair's bond during one of E.T.'s countless visits to Kirsty's homes. That song is addictive. So hot, I want to get on that monkey. <laughs> the pair had a slumber party in monkey onesies at the Kansas native's Wichita house. This was four years after the former Jenny Craig spokesperson developed her own line of organic foods. I don't care if my if I gain some weight and lose some weight. I don't care. What I care about is never gaining 100 pounds again. <laughs> Jenny, I want to come home. Back in 2004, the diet program initially helped Kirsty lose 75 pounds after a lifetime of weight struggles. Most of my life, I was skinny. And most of my life, I felt fat. Oh, what do you think they say? Right. Oh my god, she's so freaking fat. How did she gain all that weight? I mean, you know this. You know they're not just going, she looks great. She even showed off her slim down on Oprah. The next time you go on national TV in a bikini is? Next lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Never again? Was it a mistake? No, it wasn't no. a mistake. You gotta think of a new gimmick. I'm not a surgery girl. And you know why? I mean, I would have facelifts and stuff if you didn't have to be put under anesthesia. But anesthesia freaks me out. So you haven't had any work done? No. I need some. <laughs> Do I look fat? Kirsty never took herself too seriously. Remember her Showtime sitcom, Fat Actress? She was also executive producer of the reality show, Kirsty Alley's Big Life. The goal? Slim down her 230-pound frame. That 
That's why she's so fat. She's expecting twins. Stop picking on me. In 2010, Kirsty invited E.T. to her L.A. home and introduced us to her pet lemurs. Hi. They're in my will. <laughs> They're totally in my will. The kids get to live in the house, and the lemurs own the house. Kirsty sold this mansion last year, but before, she held rehearsals there with her Dancing with the Stars partner, Maxim Shmerikovsky. Uh-oh. Does he give you any sympathy at all? Him? It's OK, huh? No! <laughs> After placing second, the sometimes contentious partners reunited in 2012's All-Star Competition. Do you still talk with Max? Do you miss those rehearsals? Do you miss working with I him? I don't miss the rehearsals at all. I'm shocked that people don't die on the show. <laughs> Am I going to be the first one that dies on Dancing with the Stars? <laughs> because it, it's so physical. It's crazy. Last night, Max posted, I thought you'd be around forever. I wish we spoke often. I love you. Even in her final TV appearance, the Masked Singer contestant vowed never to slow down. I have grandchildren, and they're really young, Aww. so they're going to think this is good. Yeah. I don't ever want to retire. I want to work as an actress and in other fields for the rest of my life. If I live to be 112, I plan on working an eight-hour day at something. So that's one of my big goals. 